And now a moment from Your History and Health Starts First with Dr. Richard Brown. Welcome back to Your History and Health Starts First with Dr. Richard Brown. Today, I think I wanna to talk to you about the benefits of physical activity. We know that it's very important, but we also know that it is difficult to make people do what they don't want to do. And there's always a reason, an excuse, there's some uh, exceptions they wanna make. They wanna ignore advice. But at the same time, we have to accept the fact that, you know, it does take a lot of discipline to make lifelong changes and to change attitudes as well. So we have to uh, consider that. Now, clearly the COVID-19 virus has caused us to change health behaviors. And regrettably, many people continue to spread misinformation and outright lies about the value of COVID-19. However, I'm confident that the smart people will lead us through to a new life on the other side, a new life of normalcy. <clears throat> now, that we seem to be turning the corner in some states in this country uh, where the virus is concerned, it is now time to uh, continue that exercise routine that you might've started while you were isolated during COVID. Some people develop exercise programs while working at home during the pandemic. And they also learned on the internet that maybe you can uh, figure out ways and do things to save your life and stay healthy without having to get a prescription from the doctor. So what I wanna focus on next is uh, some compelling reasons to exercise regularly. And they're fairly simple and uh, uh, they may be those that oh, you may have thought about before, but maybe not as seriously as I want you to think about them now. So if you wanna to live to be elderly, let's say if you wanna live just to be 75 years old or more, that's a good reason to exercise, a good reason to exercise. So if you wanna reduce your risk of heart attack and stroke, exercise, regular exercise will do that for you. One of the leading causes of death in America is heart disease and stroke. Exercise can help you prevent that. Also, you can reduce your stress and depression. Stress is overlooked by a lot of people because uh, they just accept it as, oh, I'm just a little stressed out, but that's okay. But sometimes they don't realize how stressed out they are. They may be so stressed that they can't do their work, so stressed that they can't sleep, so stressed that they can't have an intelligent conversation with someone else. And so stress is very, very important. And depression, again, is something that many people don't quite understand, but it haunts a lot of people and it has various levels. It has a spectrum of behavior that takes place due to, during depression. And again, some people don't know that they're having a depression uh, situation because they haven't been educated or, or even diagnosed and uh, talked to about it. But physical activity can help reduce stress and depression. Now, if you wanna attend your children's weddings or any other special events, grandchildren's events, soccer games, baseball games, basketball games, any athletic event, you want to be able to attend those and enjoy and have fun, get exercise because it'll help you live longer, longer than you expect. So I want to say that diabetes, we talked about a couple of sessions ago, is very prevalent in the United States and it's increasing. Well, diabetes is one of those diseases that through regular exercise, you can absolutely decrease your chances of getting diabetes. And if you have it already, you can decrease your chance or increase your chance of reducing the symptoms of diabetes. So let me give you some uh, research. According to the Pew Research Center, those 60 years and older spend about half their leisure time in front of a screen, mostly television, which is about four hours a day. Other research, research report that people of color spend considerably more hours considering the use of electronic devices. So in 2000, those that were 65 years and older were on the internet. 
73% were on the internet. Okay. Smartphones came along and then uh, in 2000, they were very uh, uncommon. But now today, at least 53% of those age 65 and older are on smartphones. So it is time to get up from the sofa as you go back to work and begin uh, in working in the office again to start an exercise program. Um, a program simply walking as walking can is a form of exercise that can absolutely increase your ability to be healthy. You'll feel better uh, walking to the grocery store or inside the grocery store, shopping or doing um, laundry work, housework, mowing the lawn, all of those things are important and provide exercise that will improve your health. So we know that walking a certain uh, number of steps daily can reduce the risk of coronary heart disease, stroke and diabetes and some cancers, especially type, type two diabetes. It can also reduce the blood pressure, increase the muscle strength and help prevent falls. Lots of injuries take place from people, especially the elderly who fall. Many times it's during the night when they may be getting up to use the restroom or so. But many falls take place among the elderly, but getting regular physical ex exercise can help strengthen your, your muscles, your endurance, your, your balance, and again, can reduce those incidents in which you may you know, take a fall. More research. So there's a Dr. Dean Cesare, a clinical neurologist and co-director of the Brain Health Al Alzheimer's Prevention Program in Loma Linda University. Well, he identified that there were three links between exercise and improving brain health. And I will say something about brain health. Uh, physical activity will also help you get better grades. They will help you concentrate better. But what he noted was that number one, exercise increases the blood flow to the brain, delivering more oxygen and nutrients. Number two, at the same time, it flushes inflammatory, inflammatory and, and oxidative elements out of the brain and increases a chemical that is almost like a growth hormone for neurons. So both aerobic, I'm sorry, for both aerobic and anaerobic exercise, they are very effective, but they must be strenuous enough to get your blood pumping. So the bottom line here at this point in time is that if you have survived the pandemic, then you're lucky and that's good. You probably took the vaccine. You maintained safety precautions. Uh, you were probably in good health at the beginning. So based on history and science, the current epidemic will not be the last one. It may be with us for a while. So it's important to stay healthy and exercise regularly to enhance overall health, functional, fitness, longevity, and with the added benefit of brain health. Now you've heard that if there's no pain, there's no gain. Well, it's true. You should exercise three times a week until you sweat. Thank you. This has been Your History and Health Starts First with Dr. Richard Brown. And you can leave suggestions at ewcfacts at gmail.com. That's ewcfacts at gmail.com. This has been an EWC Communication production.